you're going to put a ton of pressure on yourself to say, I either crush this or my whole application cycle is done with. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAD. How are you doing today? Good. How about yourself? I am excellent. What can I help you with? So um, I took my MCAT and uh, I retook my MCAT in June 30th um, of this year. Okay. And I submitted my application uh, July 14th. Okay. And I was doing well with like practice exams. I was going like getting a 501 to 503 range, which for my last four practice exams. Okay. And then unfortunately, like when I got my scores back on July 30th, uh, it was a 493. Ouch. Um, yeah. Okay. Should I still go on like trying to take the exam this September if I retake it, or should I focus on like just gearing towards everything towards the next cycle already? I, yeah. It's it's hard because I I don't think there's a right answer. I I think it really depends on the student and and what your potential is for improving on that four ninety three. Right, 501, 503 for your full length exams leading up to the test. Not great, but obviously much better than a 493. And so the, the question is, and it sounds like that was already a retake. Is that yes. correct? So, so my first score was actually a 488. So okay. I, I improved, but I mean, it's not significant. Yeah, yeah. not it's not good. significant enough. So 48 tells me there's there's some some content knowledge deficits. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you improve that your full length exams with the 501 503 actually let's let's dive into that because you were retaking the test what did that look like in terms of the full length exams that you were doing so the full lengths where you were getting 501s 503s were those the second time that you were taking them um, three of them were blueprint and I believe one of them was a AMC. So they were my first time taking for all of them. First time taking for all of them. Okay, perfect. Cause unfortunately too many students get this false sense of security of like, Oh, I'm scoring a 505, but it's the second time a student took the test, even if there's a, a longer delay between those. Um, so all first time tests, which is great. Uh, and then you said a mix of Blueprint and AAMC, and the scores were very similar, which uh, Blueprint exams are the, the best out there compared to the AAMC. So that, that makes sense that your scores were similar. On test day, did anything feel different for you? Um, I mean, I get test anxiety in general, with, yeah. even since like SATs. Um, but overall, I felt better than the first time I took it. The first time I took it, I didn't really feel as prepared. I just felt a lot more anxious. Yeah. Um, Second time, I kind of focused more on that. Like, like the day before, I got like a massage. I tried to relax <laughs> nice. as much as I could. But um, this time around, was I felt better. But I mean, again, the results didn't really show that. But yeah. So for students like yourself who, with test anxiety, my fear is that if you rush into another test in September, that your anxiety is going to be that much more heightened because you're going to put a ton of pressure on yourself to say, this is do or die, right? I, I either crush this or my whole application cycle is done with. So really, it, again, it's such a personal decision, this type of question, because you can go retake the test. There's no harm in going to retake the test. When, <laughs> let me pause for a second. When did you take your first test? It was September of 2020. Like, so 2020, 2020 2021. I'm just trying to think of the, the maximum number of times that you can take the MCAT in like a two-year period. So it sounds like you would be okay if you took it here in September again and then needed to take it again next year, uh, potentially. And so really at the end of the day, it's time and money, right? And, and stress and anxiety yeah. of do you continue with the application while you're working on secondaries, if you're continuing to work on secondaries, are you able to study for the MCAT the way that you need to study for it to improve? Because that's obviously the the ultimate goal is to continue to improve. You don't want to take it again and get the same score or worse score. That just looks bad. Um, and it's just a waste of time and money. Um, are you going to do what you need to do to improve? And And that is something only you can answer.
I'll so, try to weigh my yeah. So so, so let's let's talk through it, right? So let's say you know what, I have three hundred seventy dollars to burn to go register yeah. for the MCAT again. Um, I have a, a little bit more money to burn for some more practice tests to get other ones that I haven't taken before, so I continue to to do that. Um, or maybe you get a UWorld subscription or or something else to to continue to 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 stress you in that good the good stress um, mm-hmm. uh, to prepare you for the MCAT, and you go and take it in September. the The September date alone doesn't kill you. Right, especially for you, where you are in the Inland Empire in California, potentially, right? Just assuming maybe you want to stay there, UCR, they hold a lot of spots for Inland Empire students. And so if you're in that area and you're able to improve to that 500, 503 range, but it's an October release date, well, good news, UCR will likely have some spots for you because they give priority to students like yourself. So I, I think at the end of the day, don't look at it from, is September too late? Look at it from, am I going to have the time necessary and the funds necessary to do what I need to do to improve my score by September? And if you can do that, take the test. If you can't, or if you're concerned about test anxiety and other stuff being heightened because it's all crammed into the shorter timeline, then there's no harm in taking a break and, and reapplying next year with more time to study and, and more kind of time to, to help with your test anxiety. Because I, unfortunately, I, this is my last year, I think, to be assistant. So like this next MCAT would just still cost like 130, I think. Okay. So I guess that would help a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, should I still go on applying to DO school? Because I haven't submitted my DO school application yet either. Should I like just even put that on hold or should I just wait out this, pull out this MD cycle instead? I, I think if your answer, regardless of applying DO, if your answer is I'm going to wait to prepare for the MCAT better, then you don't submit the DO application. Got it. Because a, a 493 for a DO application isn't good for DO either, right? So I, I think you, um, depending on, again, the answer that you come to about what you're going to do with a September MCAT, that'll dictate whether or not you submit your DO applications. If you're going to push forward, take the MCAT in September, uh, then go ahead and submit your DO applications as well. How does it look to schools if I sum- since I submitted my MD but having not verified yet, but then I retake my MCAT and in- September mm-hmm. would would that would they see my score as like my 493 first and then uh, once I take it again then they in October when the scores get released does it get updated like automatically yeah so so technically you don't have to check off on on the application on AMCAS you don't have to go back in there and say hey I'm taking another MCAT okay. and so the schools will not see that you're taking another MCAT and they'll assume that that 493 is your final score and they'll most likely just not take a look at you, right? You'll, you'll be filtered yeah. out. And so what you what you can do and what I would recommend you do is go into AMCAS and and check that box that, say, that, that says you have a pending MCAT test date or a test score and the schools will see that flag and go, okay, you're retaking the test great. We're not going to look at your application until that new score comes in. Got it. Okay. All right. and, and then from the DO aspect, you, you'll you'll have to release the scores from the AAMC to the DO application. And then on there, I believe you, you have that kind of same question of, of whether or not you're retaking the test. Okay. Sounds good. The, the DO timeline in general is more favorable to later MCAT test dates. Uh, with a lot of DO schools even accepting January test dates um, much later in the cycle. And so I, I think, uh, again, if, if your plan is to go ahead and push forward with a September test date, go ahead and get your DO applications in as well. So the question... I think that's what, I think the, that's que- yeah, the, the question for you is, what have you been doing test-wise that isn't working for you? Or is it strictly just test anxiety and you just freeze up during the test? I think it's a mixture of test anxiety and content review, like 
deficits here and there. Okay. Um, so let's talk about full length exams. When you take a full length exam, what does that look like in terms of actual test day? Are you doing it under real test time and environment? Um, and then post test, what does your review look like? So I try to take it within the, just by myself at home, um, within like test exact test environment. And then the day after I just spend the whole day reviewing. So the first, the day of test, I just take it and then get my score. And then the next day is just all review from like each section, each question. Okay. And what are you doing in that review? Uh, finding out what I got wrong and trying to find out my rationale, whether the question was like a guess or if it was like, um, if I knew it or not, or if I could narrow it down to like two, two answers. And mm -hmm. then if I got it wrong, I would just review that concept for about like 15, 20 minutes, depending on the topic. Okay. Did you review right answers? Um, no, I did not review right okay. answers, actually. Okay. So you're not, in my mind, reviewing a test properly. I would say, first off, you should take two days to review the test, right? Okay. We, we recommend uh, two day or, or double the time that it takes you to take the test to review the test. So the test is seven hours long. It should take you 14 hours or two days to review the test. And so really break it down potentially. Um, cars, is, cars is much harder to review because it's, it's not like, oh, I, I need to go learn amino acids a little bit more. Um, but it's still something to, to really start digging in and looking for that tone that you, you missed the first time and go, how did I miss this? And what word did I not pick up on? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so potentially just do chem, phys, and cars the first day and then bio, biochem, psych, soch, the second day, and, and reviewing everything, what you got right, because a lot of what you got right potentially could be mistakes as well, right? You got it right for the wrong reasons. And reviewing the answers and why it's right and why the wrong answers are wrong is going to help you with everything. And so that's what you should be doing with your review is reviewing every single question, even if you got it right. Why, do, why is the right answer the right answer? Why are the wrong answers the wrong answers? Re reading every single bit of the explanations for those things. Unfortunately, AAMC does a terrible job of explaining those responses. Blueprint does a great job with their full-length exams. Um, and so finding potentially more Blueprint exams to really dive into those explanations. Um, and then same thing for the wrong answers is is trying to categorize it, number one, is like, is this amino acid question? Do I need to go study amino acids a little bit more? Is this whatever, right? So classifying the, the answers uh, and then really, again, looking at why the wrong answer is the wrong answer, why the right answer is the right answer, and then just just going over and over and over and over and over again. And and not just in the heat of the moment right there, taking 20 minutes to, to study for that question, but just categorizing everything and going, okay, at the, at the end of all my review, I noticed that I missed half of the amino acid questions. Now I need to know, and now I know that I, I need to go spend a lot more time with amino acids. And that's gonna dictate your review for the next three days. And then you go take another full length exam. And then you take, and then you just re rinse and repeat. And so try, try to go a little bit more in depth with those reviews, and I, I think that will help you a lot more. At this point in my, when if I take it September, would should I just focus on like doing problems, practice problems? I would. One month? Yeah, okay. I, I would let let the let the practice problems, whether it's full length exams or QBanks, let those dictate your content review. All right. Yeah, that that definitely helps a lot. I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna shoot for September. Um, All right. That's fingers that's crossed. Good. Yeah. Hopefully. Anything else I can help you with? Um. So I. Uh, so is um I took. 40, I think, so my undergrad GPA wasn't the greatest, um, cause I graduated 2014 from undergrad. And okay. then it was like a 2.2.7 undergrad overall and like 2.2 science. But now I, I took 40 credits of post back of BCMP, well, 37, three of those were psych. Um, so 37, all eight, most of them raised, I think two Bs, but okay. it's like a 3.89, 3. Great. Um, was, is that enough? Should I just continue? taking like post back courses. I mean, obviously after my MCAT also, but. Um. Yeah, I, I think post MCAT, I, I, I think it won't hurt to take more classes. 
Um, just if, if you're going to need to reapply potentially next year, then you'll just have a, a bigger trend and, and more credits under your belt at, mm-hmm. at a better GPA. I, I think that's, that's potentially a good idea. Should I? Oh, well, no, I guess I can't write secondary. Why I guess not? I could start pre-writing secondary. Never mind. I couldn't. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, I and I recommend it. Um, so it sounds like you've, you've submitted your application. Did you did. just I'm submit still- it to one school or did you add more schools? I submitted to uh, twelve schools. I okay, yeah. So I would I would start pre writing those secondaries now. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. You use use MCAT breaks as secondary writing time. I, I think that's it. All right. So, well, good luck to you. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, you. Uh, so hopefully you uh, can can step it up in September and and not need to delay the application again. Thank you so much, Doctor Ray. Yep. Have a good one.